Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to worship on the second weekend of Christmas here at Lakeview Lutheran Church. We're glad to have you here. Um, as most of you who are joining us via, via this live stream know, this is my last um, Sunday with you here at Lakeview, but all will be okay because Pastor Steve Kotke from the Synod Office said he'll cover any issues that arise <laughs> for the next year. So um, at the end of this service, we'll put his phone number up it's, on the it's screen. Hard to believe, but I'm pretty sure Dean just misspoke. <laughs> Who gave him a mic? <laughs> the voice from. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then I, I did want to share with you that next weekend, there's church at 9 o'clock, <clears throat> and your pastor will be Pastor Mary Farmer. Well, most of you know who Pastor Mary is. She's a longtime um, supply pastor for me. Um, she retired about 35 years ago, and so she's had a lot of opportunity. No, Terry, I'm kidding. Um, Pastor Mary has been around a long time, and she previously served this congregation. So we are appreciative that she can be back to assist here until the interim pastor begins at the beginning of February. <clears throat> this morning we also will be sharing a baptism of Shepherd and Palmer, or Palmer and Shepherd um, Castile, and that will happen in a little while, and I'll have more to say when we get there. But right now, I'm going to invite us to prepare our hearts for worship during Lynn's prelude. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Today we continue to celebrate and give thanks for the light of the world. We are grateful, God, that your word was made flesh and lived among us. We are grateful that you live in this congregation now, and we pray that your word will embed itself in the hearts of Palmer and Shepherd as they come to your font this morning. Give their parents the courage to live the baptismal covenant. Bring comfort to all who mourn, including the family and friends of Jeff Bailey. And bring hope and healing to anyone who is ill, whom we now name in our hearts. We have also come today to give thanks for the long relationship between Pastor Dean and the Lakeview congregation. Watch over all of us during this time of transition, Watch over synodical staff as we use them for support. We pray in the name of the one born in Bethlehem. Amen. <clears throat> At this time, I'm going to invite Spencer, ah, Spencer, <laughs> Shepherd and Palmer to bring their baptismal sponsors and their parents forward for baptism. Now I have a, a couple of things to say about this. 
In my 23 years as a parish pastor, I've baptized many, many children, even on a single worship service, many, many children, but I have never had an opportunity to baptize twins. So I'm grateful for Cody, Cody and Hannah um, to give me this opportunity on my final day here. Now, one other thing to say is, not only do I get to baptize twins, Cody, Cody and Hannah's twins, but, I, but Cody, I um, grew up in this congregation. I had him in confirmation. He was a royal pain in the neck on youth trips for years and years. He bought a Dick Buckus doll once in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, which I can't even tell you about because it was so obscene. But anyway, um, it's exciting for me to have this opportunity today. So I'm going to have you, Shepard, you two stand up there. Don't burn yourself, Peyton. Um, a little further back. Okay? You two just step over here so you can turn and see. And you two right behind the font. I'm just waiting for Peyton to steal the burner legs on the, on the candles. I lit them just for you. In baptism, our gracious heavenly creator frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Now, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you, parents and sponsors, desire to have Palmer and Shepherd baptized into Christ? If so, together say, I do. As you bring Palmer and Shepherd this morning to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's faithful people, to bring them to the Word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture them in faith and prayer, so that Palmer and Shepherd may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your children grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, answer, I do. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, answer, I renounce them. And let us together, and those of you who are viewing this live can also join us, as we profess our faith using the traditional words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. If you would just tip Palmer's, Palmer over the baptismal font. Should I get the right napkin? And of course, they've given these children such long names that we'll be here all day just reading them. Palmer Ray Arlene Castillo, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now if you'll just walk that way while you guys come this way, I'll give you that. Got it? Shepherd James Santiago Castillo. Yeah, hi! <laughs> He's laughing at me. <laughs> Cody! I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oops. 
Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Palmer and Shepherd with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Shepherd, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Palmer, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Shepherd, power, um, let your light so, so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify God who is in heaven. Okay? All right. <laughs> Shepherd, let your light so shine before others so that they may see your good works and glorify God who is in heaven. We welcome you, Shepherd and Palmer, into the body of Christ and into the mission that we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. And we'll give a little applause as we welcome Shepherd and Palmer into the way of the church. And please don't raise them to be like their father. As the uh, family, you may blow the candles up. Please don't burn yourselves or hit any of this and burn yourself. Um, you may return to your seat as we hear music for meditation. Thank you, Lynn.
you, Lynn, for playing one of my favorite Christmas carols, Bring a Torch, Jeanette Isabella. Now, it's a favorite not because it's so gloriously beautiful, it's a favorite because it's so mysterious. Who was Jeanette Isabella? Are there two people, or is it one person? And why would you bring torches to a manger filled with straw? It just doesn't make sense. The Gospel reading today comes from the first chapter of St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of humans, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the, o it is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. I just have to say what a wonderful sound it was to hear a baby making noise in this room. We haven't heard a kid making noise in this room for months, so it is, don't feel bad. It is great. Well, I've never had to preach a retirement sermon before, so today provides me with a couple of new experiences, baptizing twins and a retirement sermon. Now, to be honest, we never covered retirement sermons in seminary preaching classes. So I asked a pastor friend, of course, a good ELCA pastor friend from this synod, um, what he would say today, and his response was profound. Who cares? What are they going to do, fire you? I said, I know, but Cocky's going to be there for the bishop's office, and I don't want to get pulled off the roster. Well, Chris and I, my wife, have certainly been feeling emotional about this day for a very long time. We, we've dreaded this day even before retirement was on my mind. I also know that some of you haven't been looking forward to, to, today, to today as well. Oh, and I'm not vain enough to think that everyone is feeling sad because I'm leaving, but I do like to think that some of you are struggling at least a little bit. I do like to believe that some of you are going to miss me and my sarcastic, rude, and snarky sense of humor and style. And I know for a fact that many, many of you are very worried about what the choir is going to sound like after I'm gone. It can never be the same, Virellen and John, my other two fellow tenors. So, I do have some words of encouragement for us today. It's God's fault. Since we live in a society and a country where humans love to blame others for anything uncomfortable that happens, I'm giving us all permission today to blame our anxiety or sadness or feelings of loss and even anger on God. You see, way back at the beginning, when the earth was a formless void and was covered in darkness and watery chaos, you know, when Carol Kite was a little girl, anyway, at that time, a wind from God swept over the face of the waters 
and God called the creation into being. In the beginning, there was God's word, bringing order to the chaos and light and life to the people. And when the time was right, this word, which was present with God in creation, became flesh and lived among us. This word became a baby in a manger. This word gave us the power to become the children of God, like Palmer and Shepherd this morning. This word named Jesus, Emmanuel, came to free us from our sins and to bring God's remarkable gift of grace upon us. Grace and truth, forgiveness and salvation came to us from this word made flesh in Jesus Christ. Then, this word named Jesus showed us how to live a life that glorified God. Jesus called us to pray and to give thanks. Jesus called us to shower others with kindness and care and compassion. Jesus called us to love our neighbors and to, to work for justice as a one way to show our love for God. Jesus demonstrated to us how we could be the presence of God in this world. And when he rose from that grave on Easter morning, he ordained Mary as the first pastor and sent her out to tell everyone else that she had seen the risen Christ. And like Mary on that first Easter, we also have been called to proclaim that we too have seen the Lord, the Word made flesh. So while each and every one of us is called to be a minister of Christ, some denominations have established formal procedures to educate and ordain leaders of the faithful. Lutherans do this. Early on, I tried to resist that call to that process. So out of high school, after I spent a summer in Europe singing, I went off to singing. That's why, there's the key, singing. I then went off to college, to party, to travel, and to get a degree in sociology because I am fascinated by the way humans interact. But since it's not very easy to support oneself on a fascination of human interaction, I then continued on to get a master's degree in social work as well. I did social work in the public sector. But that just wasn't fulfilling. Good job, just wasn't fulfilling. So I thought maybe I could fix that by incorporating my work and my faith, and I therefore took a job with a private Lutheran institution. And it was good, but it still didn't cut it. There was still that gnawing inside of me to answer that call. And eventually, I couldn't handle it any longer, and my family and I decided to respond. And we went off to Wartburg Seminary in Dubuque, Iowa, just like Laura is doing today. And this led me to accept a call eventually here to Lakeview Lutheran Church to do ministry back in 2001. And since that time, 19 years, you and I have worked together to proclaim the love and forgiveness of God to the world. So you see, it's really God's fault that we are at this emotional retirement date. God brought us here since way back at the beginning. Despite my sadness in leaving here, I could not have designed a better relationship for ministry than what has happened here over the past 19 years. Together we have done significant work Together, we have engaged in lively weekend worship with prayers and thanksgiving and the singing of hymns of praise to the Word made flesh and to piano preludes over and over and over. Together, we have responded to people who were struggling, homeless people, hungry people, people in need of blood, people with malaria, people with addictions, 
people who have been the victims of floods and hurricanes and fires and tornadoes. We've spent many days over the years with mucky hands and with drywall dust-covered faces. I notice there's some on Facebook right now. Together, we have advocated for people for whom society has continued to persecute and harass because of gender or race or sexual orientation or criminal, aid, criminal behavior or age or abilities or religion. We have done some hard things over the past 19 years. We have taken some big risks. We've done some things that others have even considered contentious. We've been condemned for some of our actions. We have received unsigned hate mail, and we've received reproachful emails. Our ministry together has not always been without consequences and reactions, mostly kind, but not always. But here's what I know as an insider. You, the people of Lakeview, have acted out of love. You have engaged in ministry because you understand God's gracious salvation that came that night in a manger. The people of Lakeview, you, you understand how the Word made flesh modeled that human relationships are more important than laws and traditions and orthodoxy and rubrics. This is a wealthy congregation. Maybe not financially, but when it comes to our hearts and your willingness to respond, you are filled with wealth. And it's all God's fault. It's God's fault because we together have simply been doing what we believe God has called us to do. So don't stop. Continue to be bold. Continue to take risks. Continue to question orthodoxy. Continue to stay awake during those preludes. Continue to look at the Bible through multiple lenses as you do so well. Continue to find those spiritual truths. Continue to be advocates for the oppressed. Continue to put people and relationships first. Continue to be the people who have made my years here filled with memories of hard work and a selfless, selfless proclamation of the gospel. You are awesome people. You are dedicated to giving God the glory and that should not change just because pastoral leadership changes. I love you all, and I give thanks for each of you. One last time, let's together pray the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I'm going to invite um, Steve Kotke, the assistant to our bishop in the South Central Synod of Wisconsin, to come forward, and Greg Steinhauer, who is your council president. Let me get my mask on. All right. Pastor Dean, on November 2nd, 2001, we called you to be our pastor, to proclaim God's word, to baptize new members into the Church of Jesus Christ, to announce God's forgiveness to us, and to preside at our celebration of the Lord's Supper. With the gospel, you have comforted us in times of sickness and distress at the death of our loved ones. Sharing our joys and sorrows, you and your family have been important to our life together 
in the church of Jesus Christ, and in our service to this community. You have served our congregation faithfully for over 19 years. You are now leaving us to retire. As the representative of the members of this congregation, we wish to honor your ministry here at Lakeview. I give thanks for the life we have shared in Christ. I now return to you symbols representing my role and responsibilities as an ordained ministry in your midst. I have baptized people in the name of it's really hard to do this with a mask on and tears in your eyes and steamed up glasses. I have baptized people in the name of the triune God, using water as a symbol of cleansing and rebirth. I have tried to proclaim the word of God faithfully among you. Here is the Bible which expresses this. I have celebrated communion with you. Here is bread and wine means by which we are gathered in our faith and transformed into the body of Christ. I have prepared and cooked food with you. <laughs> food and fellowship have been at the heart of this congregation, and the kitchen and dining room are where we have found the presence of Christ so often in each other and in our surrounding community. Here are the tongs and the spatula, symbols of our joy of being together. Here are the keys to my office. By the way, my cottage key is on here too, so you can't take this home with you yet. This is the place where I have challenged, counseled, and comforted people. I thank you, members of Lakeview, for the love, kindness, and support shown to me and my family during my ministry here. I ask forgiveness for the ways I have sinned against you. I am grateful for the ways my ministry has been accepted as I leave, I carry with me all that I have learned here. We receive your thankfulness. We offer you forgiveness and accept that you now leave to begin your call to retirement. We are grateful for your time among us. We ask forgiveness for the ways we have sinned against you. Your influence on our faith and faithfulness will not leave us at your departure. I forgive you, and I accept your gratitude, trusting that our time together and our parting are pleasing to God, knowing that your future is bright. Do you, Greg, as Council President at Lakeview and speaking for all the members of this congregation, release Dean from his duties as your pastor? I do, with God's help. On behalf of this congregation, again, do you offer your encouragement for Dean and Chris as they begin this time of retirement? I do, with God's help. Do you, Pastor Dean, release the people of Lakeview from turning to you and depending on you? I do, with God's help. Do you offer encouragement for the continued ministry here at Lakeview? I do, with God's help. On behalf of the South Central Synod of Wisconsin, I witness to the words spoken here words of thankfulness, forgiveness, and release. We will hold you in prayer as you begin your retirement ministry. Pastor Dean, you have been called to retirement, and you have said yes to that call. We acknowledge that it is not only the Holy Spirit calling you, and you saying yes, we are sending you. You have been in our midst for over 19 years. You have been part of this church family sharing your gifts for the sake of God's mission in our community. We are proud to send you with our blessing. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have called us in our baptism to be your servants. You have enabled us to respond to your call as a community of believers. Thank you for the partnership in the gospel this congregation has enjoyed with Pastor Dean. Now, send Dean and Chris forth to retirement. Strengthen them for the mission you will place before them, and may they go from here knowing of Lakeview's love and support. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Pastor Dean, you routinely, at the close of worship, sent the Lakeview congregation with a blessing. Today, we're going to send you with that blessing. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, I forgot something in the announcements, so um, yes. um, I will go get it for Greg to take care of. It's Greg's problem, really. Terry and Sue, could you please come forward? We have something for you. The congregation is so grateful for what you've done for us, that you've kept us in communication, and kept things alive on Sunday morning. It's just, we, we can't thank you enough. Um, and what, what, what we have here is something that you, you have to keep yourselves. We, we got something that, that you can't give back um, that we want to, to uh, share with you. Uh, there's there's, there's an a Amazon gift card in there. I think that's for $500. And there's, uh, there's uh, some restaurant cards in there. I think there's $500 in there, too. And the congregation just cannot thank you enough for that. Everybody was so grateful for all of you do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Terry and Sue. <laughs> I suggested the food gift cards because I knew you'd like them. Also, I, too. Also, I, but I, I just want to just look. I, I'm, I'm, I'm deeply honored to be representing the congregation here at Lakeview today. This is, I know everybody would like to be here in person shaking hands and giving hugs and maybe even kisses. Um, so I'm so grateful to be standing here next to you today with these other folks. We cannot tell you what your presence here has meant to us. Your, your courage and Chris, your strength to show us avenues and places that we wouldn't normally go. Those are the places we want to keep going. And you're in the people business and it so shows. You've left an indelible mark on all of us. We get to take that with you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Oh, we, we've, we've also got something for you. Um, we, we, we have a, uh, there's a recognition fund that, that the folks here at uh, Lakeview have put together. I'd like to get that out here now. Because you have done so much for not only this church, but for the community and everything. And so selfless. That's how you folks are. Um, let me read this to you, okay? This is in appreciation for two decades of ministry and outreach at Lakeview Church. The congregation proudly honors Pastor Dean Kirst with the establishment of the Kirst Recognition Fund to further support goals of this congregation presented on January 3rd, 2021. But that, that, that represents a total of $10,500. And there's over 56 families, 56 families, everybody's just so grateful for all you've done. And I, I just don't even, I, I just don't know how to, to say the final goodbye here, but uh, it's just been wonderful, folks. And we wish you the very best in your retirement. Enjoy it. it it's God's time. It's your time. It's family time. So I'm sure you'll appreciate all of that. Thank you. Thank you, Lakeview. Oh, thank you. Let's just go home. <laughs> no, but, but I do have to remind you one thing. So as of right now, I'm not your pastor anymore. So remember, when you see me in the grocery store or in Walgreens, whenever we can go back there, you have to call me Dean or Reverend. And I gotta tell you, nobody has ever called me Reverend before. And if you call me Reverend in a store, I probably won't turn around because I won't know you're talking to me. So, so thank you for being a part of this service today and being a part of my life. Thanks, Greg.